Welcome. What is 3D LUT Creator and why should you care? Well, 3D LUT Creator is probably the most sophisticated and powerful piece of software for working with color that you have never heard of. And why haven't you heard of it? Probably because 3D LUT Creator is software that is used mostly in the video world. But for all the power that it brings to the video world in terms of color, color manipulation, it can bring that same power, and it does bring that same power, to the world of still photography as well. It may be blasphemous to say, but yeah, it's more powerful than Photoshop when it comes to color. Sound interesting? Well, one of the problems is, at least in my mind, is that the documentation that's out there about how to use it is not all that clear. So what I'd like to do is put together a series of videos, and if there's enough interest, this could become a start-to-finish course on how to use 3D LUT Creator, hopefully explaining it in a very clear and straightforward manner that gives you an option to get the software and, and harvest its power for your own photography. Well, what I'd like to accomplish with this first video today is to explain, first of all, what a LUT is, then bring you to the 3D LUT Creator website and show you the different versions, because there are several different versions of the software available. So you might figure out which version is best for you, and then take you on a quick tour through the software. That's plenty for the first video, and we'll have more to come in terms of actually setting it up and how to use it in depth. If this kind of content sounds interesting to you, I'd certainly appreciate your hitting the subscribe button and turning on notifications so that you don't miss the next video in this series, and I'm going to put it in a playlist called 3D LUT Creator. Let's get started. So what exactly is a LUT? LUT stands for lookup table, and a lookup table is simply a list of instructions that says if you have a pixel with specific red, green, and blue values, then take it and convert it to a pixel with another specific set of red, green, and blue values. It's really just a set of instructions to convert one color to another. But because there are so many potential sets of red, green, and blue values, it could contain hundreds upon hundreds of instructions within the LUT file. So why is it called a 3D LUT? Well, a 1D LUT can only work within one of the three color channels and can instruct, say, one shade of red to become a different shade of red. But the RGB color space can be portrayed as a cube with red, green, and blue axes. Of course, there are many more than five squares along each side of the cube for the true color space. But in this example, there are five with values of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. By the way, this is why the most common type of LUT file is called a .cube file. Anyway, the specified color within the illustration has a value of 1 on the red axis, 3 on the green axis, and 4 on the blue axis. A 3D LUT can move the values of that pixel anywhere within the three-dimensional cube of colors, not just along one of the axes like a 1D LUT can. So in this example, the 3D LUT might say to change that specified pixel to instead a value of 3 on the red axis, 4 on the green axis, and 2 on the blue axis. Now this is a pretty extensive change like one might use in color grading, but the instructions can also be used to make more subtle color changes as well. So since I'm hoping for this to end up as a full training course, let's start at the very beginning and go to the company website at 3dlutcreator.com so we can look at what the different versions of the software offer. Now, let me just mention that the developer of the software happens to be Russian. So should you somehow end up at this version of the website, not to worry, just click on the English button and you'll be brought right to the English version of the site. So let's look at the software versions that are offered. Now, there happens to be a sale going on now, and so it's really a very good time to buy the software if it's something that you're interested in. But depending on when you happen to be watching this video, these prices may be different. So, first is the free demo version, and it's just that. It's a demonstration version, 
It's the entire software, but it does not integrate with other programs, which means it doesn't integrate into Photoshop, which is a big negative, and it doesn't save your image. So we're left with the grading edition, the standard edition, and the professional edition. Now, the grading edition, I would not recommend buying. Why? Because it's been severely handicapped. It doesn't have, and we'll, we'll see uh, as we move on what these grids and channels are, but it's with that, it does not contain the color grid, the channel tab, the volume tab, 2D curves, or masking. So it's really a very handicapped edition. It's at a very nice price, but it's not the edition I would recommend purchasing. So the standard and the professional editions are left, and Actually, for still images, I think that the standard edition would do fine for anyone. The main difference between the standard and the professional editions are the size of the LUT that it can generate, but honestly, 33 is fine. And the standard edition does not have auto matching colors to a reference, which just means you can't co basically copy a color grade from another image or from a film very easily, but not really a big deal. I think that either the standard or the professional edition would do anyone dealing with still photography just fine. The price, is, the price difference is not that or that large. So if you wanted to go with the professional edition, go for it. But honestly, I think either one would be fine for still photography. So let's take a very quick tour of the software, not to teach how to use it, but just to be able to tell you a little bit about what it does. Teaching how to use the software will start with the next video, which I hope to have available next weekend. So here we are in Photoshop, and we have an image open. If we go to 3D LUT Creator, this is the interface that we're presented with. And... Right here, we can bring that image from Photoshop right into the software very easily. And we have a number of tabs. These are the main tabs. And you can tell by some of the names, these are some of the tabs that were disabled in some of the less expensive versions. But the first tab is the channel tab. And this is basically a visual representation of the channel mixer, which is in Photoshop. Now, in Photoshop, we rarely use the channel mixer, or at least most people don't. It's difficult to use, and you always have to make sure that the changes you make add up to 100, and you have to do that by adding them yourself and making changes with each slider. But with this channel mixer, everything is normalized, so you can move whatever you want, and it automatically adds each channel so that the, <clears throat> so, excuse me, so that the total is up to 100. And you can see the sort of changes that can be had by moving these points around. Uh, these are the exact same changes that can be had using the channel mixer in Photoshop. But again, much easier to use and automatically normalized. And we can reset that. And the next tab is the volume tab. And the interface looks very similar. And basically what this lets you do is adjust the volume of each channel. And it's got a very nice feature that you can actually adjust the highlights and the shadows separately in terms of the volume of each of the red, green, and blue channels. Again, we're not showing how to use this now. I'm just trying to demonstrate what all of these little tabs can do once you learn how to use them. We'll reset that. So this is the so-called A-B tab. And if you look while I move my cursor onto different areas of the photograph, there's an X and then there's a square around these points. The X indicates where on the color wheel that actual color is. And the square around the point indicates the closest point to the X. So here out in the greens, you can see where that is. You can see some purples on the center of the flower. And of course, there's a lot of yellow. And you can see that the yellows seem to all be along this line right here. And if we were to take this line, 
we could shift all our yellows to the red side. We could shift our yellows to the green side. We can make them less saturated or more saturated. And you can do a lot of very powerful changes of color with this AB grid. We'll reset that. The next tab is the so-called CL tab. And again, as you go over the image, you can see where the colors lie. And all this white actually indicates the colors in your image. And you can see it's very heavy in the yellow and the greens here. And of course, there's a lot of yellow and green in this image. Um, if we were to select a number of points here and move them, you can make the color more saturated, less saturated, light, lighter, darker, in a very in intuitive way. Uh, this is just the beginning of what you can do with the uh, so-called CL grid. I'll reset that. Now we have the Curves tab. And this puts curves in Photoshop to shame. And you know how important curves are in Photoshop. So the luminance curve is basically the same curve uh, as there is in, in Photoshop. And we have the master curve, the red, green, and blue. That's, that's very Photoshop-like. But we also have curves, so-called sat luma. So we can adjust the luminance of the image based on saturation. We have a luma sat where we can, uh, we can adjust the saturation based on luminance. And a sat sat curve where we could adjust the saturation based on how much saturation there is to start with, which is very similar to vibrance. We can work in a number of different uh, color spaces, as you can see here. And if we pull up the rings, we can actually color grade an entire image. And this is, although it looks similar to shadows, midtones, highlights, color grading in Photoshop or um, rather in, in Lightroom. It's actually very different. Uh, we can get into how during the course, again, if there's interest, but it's a very different way of color grading than in Photoshop. There are really a lot of powerful tools here. Uh, at first blush, you don't really realize how powerful they are until you start to see some of the things that they can do. 2D curves are very different type of curves. They are used, uh, again, really for color grading and making large changes in color. They're a more advanced feature, and you know we can talk about those. And finally, there is some very advanced masking available in the software. There's luminance masking, which is you know, very much like uh, the TK panel or, or other kinds of luminance masking. But you can also mask based on all these other factors and make some pretty advanced uh, masks in the software. So overall, this is just a very quick view that really doesn't give you an appreciation of how much this software really can do in terms of color. Really, uh, much more powerful than Photoshop when it comes to color in many ways. And then just to show you what happens here going back to Photoshop, let's say we had made a change here on the flower. Mm, I don't know, let's say we had desaturated. I'm not saying this is good. I'm just saying I want to make a change that is going to be easily visible when we go back to Photoshop. So let's say we made changes here, and you could have made changes on any of the other grids as well. And then there's a little tab here that says LUT to Photoshop, and it is going to put all the changes that you made in any of the tabs into a LUT file, which is a series of instructions as we saw. And it is going to bring that LUT file back to Photoshop as a layer. And you can see this is a color lookup layer. It's an adjustment layer like any other layer in Photoshop. You can turn it on or off. You can adjust its opacity. You can adjust its blending mode like any other adjustment layer. So it becomes 
even more powerful as you bring it back into Photoshop. And I think that the real power isn't just in one piece of software or another, but it's in the way you can use both of these pieces of software together. So I hope that perhaps I've whetted your appetite and aroused your curiosity about what the software can do. Like I mentioned, if there's adequate interest, I'd like to make this into a training course simply because I don't believe that what's currently out there is very well explained or very complete. I personally found 2D LUT Creator hard to learn because of the limits of the current documentation. I'd like to contribute by making it easier for others to learn how to use this. If you have the software or perhaps are interested in it, and if you're into color, I think there's really a lot to be had from the software and would like to see more, please let me know in a comment below the video. I'd appreciate any support by having you hit that subscribe button and, of course, turning notifications on so you don't miss the next installment of this series. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.